Hey, I'm Gem and this is TV Rotsy round three. I am incredibly nervous about this. I have not had the best reading month. More on that in my wrap up and briefly in a mo. But this month, obviously I've got TV Rotsy. And then, as I'm sure you guys are aware, there is Bookopolithon being hosted by Becca over at Becca and the Books. And there's also The Novice Path, the magical readathon, being hosted by G over at Book Race. And I really want to participate in both. But The Novice Path is a bit easier because I only really have to read two books. But if I can get books that match my TB Roxy fonts and that, I can just double those up. Bookopoly is totally out of my control. It could be anything when I roll and it could be really difficult to double up but I mean this is all speculation I have not even got my dice out yet so anything could happen I'm gonna give you a brief recap of last month and then I'll get the boards out and we'll we'll give this a go and hope for the best it could be chaotic we'll see my first roll last month was fave author and this was a two book prompt so I picked the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, which I have read, and Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab, which I have read. So far, so good. My second role was Dark Academia. This was a one book prompt. I picked Bunny by Mona Awad. I have not started this, however, I am literally about to. This is what I'm gonna read after I film this video, and it is now the 29th, I think, so I still have a couple of days. I'm gonna cap this as completed. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to read most of it in this month, so that's fine. My third role was Fantasy. I picked Anyway the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell, and I am very annoyed because I did not get to this, and I don't think I'm going to get a chance to start it, so I'm going to have to count this one as a fail, which means I have to take a punishment. I'm really hoping that I can get this back onto the TBR for September because I really, really want to read it. I just didn't have a chance it was just such a weird month I had a week off but I was spending it all with Jensen and no reading happened and I've literally just been trying to cram all my books in to the last week and I don't want to have to cram this I want to take my time with it so I'm counting it as a fail but hopefully we can get it back in for September. Roll number four was POC rep and this was another two book prompt I picked Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia I have not completed this however I only have like I don't know, I'm going to finish this today. Um, I'm reading it on audiobook. Even though I have the book right in my hands, I have been listening to the audiobook and um, I think I have like just under two hours to go. So if I don't finish it today, I can listen to the last couple of hours whilst I work on Tuesday. So I'm going to count that as completed. And I also picked The Bedlam Stacks by Natasha Pulley and I have finished this. And my last role gave us author debut. I picked The Watchmaker of Filigree Street, also by Natasha Pulley, and I have read this. I had a couple of books that weren't on TB Rotsy, but were for a different readathon, and I foolishly, well, me not foolishly, I prioritised these. So I read Devolution by Max Brooks, and I also read Mario the Patriot Volume 4. I'll go into everything more in my wrap up, but for TB Rotsy, there is one fail. So I wasn't sure what to do for punishment because I hadn't really thought that far ahead. I was kind of like, oh, I'll always do it. Girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was talking to the girls in my group chat and I was like, what do I do? At that point, I still had five and a half books to read. And we were like, we'll, we'll just add a roll per book. And I was like, I need to get my skates on because I'm not doing... 10 rolls <laughs> because if we get doubles and then there's Bacopoli it was just going to be crazy so I really got my skates on and I'm down to one and I think I will I'm trying to decide if I should do an extra roll or if I should pull a book from the cauldron which is full of books that have been on my shelf for like a thousand years I was going to do a roll but I'm panicking because if I if I do an extra roll and I have to do a double prompt again, it could get a little bit out of hand. But I don't know, I don't think there's many books in there that I want to read and I was kind of going to use that for, is it like the community shelf or the chance card in Bacopoli where you have to like 
pick between books you're not excited for and you are excited for because there's some that I am and some that I'm not. So that would be easier. I'm gonna add a roll. Oh, okay, I'm adding a roll. So we're gonna do six rolls. We're gonna do six rolls, that's fine. We'll do six rolls and then we'll do Bacopoli and then I will fit everything in and I will hopefully have a usable TBR that isn't gonna actually make me drown. This is fine. This is all fine. Let's get into the rolls. The first thing we need to do is fill in the gaps left by last month's prompts. So I've given these a good shuffle, but I'll just pull some out at random. Roll number one. Keep the two threes. Uh, okay, so we can either go for three of the kind or the full house. I'm going to risk it for three of the kind. Yes, okay, good. So we've got three of the kind, and that is read with, and that is a yellow. So roll number one gave us read with, which is perfect because Ashley from Ashley's Media Addiction, Becca from the Becca Fowl and Rachel from Rattled Stars are hosting Scythe Along and they did Scythe last month which I didn't join in with because I've already read it and this month is Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman so I will be joining them for that. I'm going to watch the live show hopefully to kind of refresh my memory on Scythe but then I can just dive in with this one. So if you don't know what Scythe is about, it's basically like a dystopia or a utopia, depending on which way you look at it, where the human race has kind of conquered death. People don't naturally die anymore. So there are the Scythes which, who go around and it is their job to kind of end people's lives to kind of keep the population under control. And I can't exactly remember everything that happened in the first one, but I vaguely remember it. So the, the live show will give me a refresher. But I do know that the Thunderhead, or at least I think I know, the Thunderhead is like this artificial intelligence that decides who dies and I'm not sure. It will be nice to kind of continue a series though because I've got so many ongoing and I did really enjoy Scythe. I just need to kind of refresh my memory because it's been a while. Roll number two. Hmm. Let's go for a round, so we've got three. Okay. No, okay. Um... So I guess we definitely don't want to do We can go two, four, or five for a double prompt. Let's go for two. Beautiful cover. And that's another yellow. God. So roll number two has given us our first double prompt, which you really don't want this early in the game, but that's fine. It's beautiful cover, which is obviously open to interpretation. Things that I think are beautiful, you might not. My first pick for this is Anyway the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. I just wanted to get this on as soon as possible. And I love the style of these covers. Obviously the edges are gorgeous. I might live to regret this because it is a bit of a chunky book, but I'm gonna put it on now anyway. This is the final book in the Simon Snow series which you probably already know when I did talk about it last month. I can't really say anything about it without spoiling the first two books. So I'm just gonna leave it at that, but I'm very excited and I'm determined that I'm gonna to get to it this month. My second pick for this prompt is Remina by Genji Ito. I think it's Remina. Uh, this is about an uh, alien planet, I think. I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, I think Junji Ito's art style is amazing anyway, so there's that. But I just think that kind of red and black vibe that it has, and like the, I just think it's stunning. I'm going to be putting more manga into my TV Rotsy picks because I've been filling it with books and then forgetting about my manga. I was supposed to read this last month and I totally forgot. <laughs> So I'm making sure it's in so that I don't forget about it this month and you'll probably see more manga come through because I've been buying a lot of it recently and I really want to make sure that I'm reading it. So there'll be more of that to come. But yes, super excited for this one and I think it is gorgeous. Roll number three. We don't want another yellow because that will be adding another roll. Okay, uh, let's keep, oh god, let's keep the two and sixes as try for a full house. No. Oh god. Oh god! Okay. So we've already used two, so it's gonna be six or five. This is another double prompt. Oh god. Okay, let's go six. Oh god. Oh, this is not... Okay, it's ghosties for two and it's another yellow. Well, roll number three has done me dirty because not only is it another double prompt, but it's another yellow. So we have another roll to add, which is just... This is fine. This... It's fine. It's not fine. 
The prompt it gave us was ghosties, which is a good prompt because I am in kind of like a spooky mood. And it does help me out because the first pick that I have is The Diviners by Libba Bray. And me and my friend Jess are gonna be reading a book a month from this. So hopefully I can get them all on my TBRC for the rest of the year. I have read The Diviners before, but it was quite a long time ago and I feel like I need to reread it before we continue with the series. So the, obviously the idea is Diviners in September and then Lair of Dreams blah 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 onwards onwards one in october november december this is set in the 1920s in new york and it's like a paranormal type thing i do remember a bit of what it's about i remember there was like a mystery element to it and the people in this kind of like have powers but it's not like x many it's more subtle more I don't know how to describe it but I'm really excited to kind of read this one again and then I can continue the series because that'll be another series that I'm actively reading rather than saying that I'm actively reading it and not picking it up so excited to give this one a second read and my second pick for ghosties is The Carry Horn by Darcy Coates this is probably going to be my final chance for Darcy Coates. I don't think she's a bad writer, I'm just not sure that her writing style is for me. So the last two books that I've read have just been like three stars, so I don't know. But this one does sound really good. This woman works in like a haunted house attraction, but not like an attraction, like it's a real haunted house, but people come and she does like tours and things. And she's never really seen anything, but she'd like to. And then she has this uh, event I guess where like people come and stay for like a week and she's the tour guide for while they're there and I think you know really creepy stuff starts happening I think somebody dies under mysterious circumstances I'm just the the actual plot sounds really really good so I'm kind of quietly hopeful that this might be the Darcy Coates for me this is not going to plan okay roll number four <laughs> Oh, oh good, okay, so we've got um, three, four, five, six, we'll see if we can get a large run. No, so we've got a small run, one book prompt, thank God, and that is Out of Comfort Zone. Roll number four gave us Out of Comfort Zone, and for that I've gone for A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough. I have this as an audiobook. I don't read a lot of non-fiction, it's not really my jam, so there's a few things that I read and enjoy. If I'm going to read it, it tends to be via audiobook, and could you ask for a better narrator than David Attenborough? This is about kind of the environment and the need to start protecting our planet, which we should have been already doing, but he's just kind of talking about the dire state of our planet, I believe. So it's not very long. I'm just going to enjoy listening to him whilst I work, and he just has a way of getting everything across in a way that makes everything so understandable and so relatable and I just absolutely love this dude. He is an absolute national treasure and I'm actually really looking forward to giving this a listen. Roll number five. Oh, okay, we've got three fives. Let's try four and a five for four of a kind. Yes, let's try for Yarsi, why not? Ah, oh, okay, four of a kind. And that is... Huh? Oh! Well, okay, so apparently I had that printed twice, so let's just pick another one. And it is graphic novel, which is good, but it's another red, so. Roll number five has given us graphic novel, which is a nicer prompt, but makes me nervous, because that's the second red. For that, I've gone for Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. This is like a short story collection, I think. It's been on my shelf for quite a while. It's been on my list for even longer. And I think it is just kind of... It says, from the macabre imagination of award-winning comic creator Emily Carroll, five mysterious and chilling stories which follow journeys into and out of the eerie abyss, which sounds really, really cool. And it's all looking pretty, pretty cool inside. So obviously not too much to say about that one, but very excited to read that because it has been set on my shelf for a long long time this is looking incredibly dangerous we are now doing the punishment roll oh um one three four if we can get two and a five we can do a large run oh this is not looking good okay okay can we have can we have two please dice no <laughs> no okay okay um <laughs> Let's go for two, we've got two of the five, so let's go for five, and that is a five star prediction. Well, roll number six gave us our third double prompt. 
is this game for real? <laughs> we haven't even got to Bacopoli yet. My God, okay. Okay. It's fine, five star predictions. Who doesn't wanna read lots of five star predictions? So my first pick for this is going to be Satan Loves You by Grady Hendrix. I don't remember too much about this one. I think it's just kind of Satan doesn't like his job. It kind of sounds like a comedy horror. I don't know. It's Grady Hendrix. So obviously it's a five star prediction, but uh, yeah, I can't tell you anything about the plot at this stage. <laughs> so it's what it is, but Grady Hendrix, automatic five star prediction at this point. My second pick is The Resident by David Jackson. This is a book I got in the Abominable Book Club and my cousin has already read it and says that I'm gonna love it. She keeps telling me about it and telling me I need to read it. So we're making it happen. I have to admit, I have been thinking about this ever since I got it in the box. However, I'm very nervous because it plays on one of my biggest fears, which is someone being in your loft so this is about a serial killer who's like on the run and he gets into this person's loft and then he realizes that the loft goes across the entire terrace of houses and he starts like spying on people and it's honestly one of my big fears is someone being in your loft or a basement or a crawl space or something and you just not knowing that they're there so excited but kind of already terrified and then we have one more roll to do roll number seven thanks to getting three yellows uh please please be kind we do not want a red we do not want a red and we really could do with something on this side because this tbr is looking dangerous okay well let's go one three four five we've been here before we've been here before we need a two we need a two. No, we need two. A two? No! No! Okay. So we're going for three or four. Three or four. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. What is a red? Okay. Uh, we're gonna go four. We're gonna go for four. Mm. No! <laughs> Colour in the title is a bloody red! Roll oh, number seven. I can't believe this has happened. Another red. Another red. You know, I just, when I shuffled and I replaced the second out of comfort zone, because apparently I didn't check these prompts carefully enough and we're doubling them up. When I changed it for graphic novel and there was that little red thing on, a bit of me went, oh, that's not ideal because we've already got red. And I thought, well, what's the worst that can happen? Surely, surely you're not gonna get three reds and three yellows in the same game. And then along came colour in the title. <laughs> I'm gonna use it as an excuse to start Blue Exorcist uh, by Keizu Kato. I really should have looked that up, I'm sorry. Um, I am actively collecting this and I really, really want to start reading it. I've enjoyed the anime and I know that this expands on it quite a lot and the anime, I mean, whether we'll ever get a season three, I don't know, but obviously this is, much longer and goes into more detail and I need to know what else happens. So I'm very excited to be able to start this now thanks to my wonderful friend Emma who gifted me the first volume from her own personal shelves after I couldn't find it anywhere. I've collected quite a lot ever since then which is like literally in a week <laughs> and I've got more coming. I'm still struggling to get a few volumes. 10 and 14 are proving difficult to get and seven I'm waiting for it to be sent which hopefully by the end of this month I will have it issued to me but I've got like a, a few so I can make a start on it I can make a start and I know I, I wasn't going to start this until I finished Tokyo Ghoul but I mean TB Razzi said colour in the title and Blue Exorcist were staring at me and I really want to read it so Hi Editing Gemma here in all the absolute drama and chaos of this TBR, I forgot to make a note that this was a double prompt. So consider this me officially adding BX's volume 2 also to the TBR. You can make this up. This TBR is mental. I mean, I don't have anything to say about it as the sequel to volume 1. I just... I'll just add that to 
the massive stack, shall I? <laughs> okay, dice. You don't like me and I don't like you, but this is our final roll, please. Please. This is roll number eight. Okay, we got one, two, three. We need a four and a five. We need a four and a five. We do not have four and five. We've not been having a lot of luck, but now we've got two twos and two threes. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna go for a full house. Yes! <laughs> yes! It's a one book prompt. And it is TBR Vet, and that's green. Roll number eight. Our final roll. Thank God. TBR Vet. I had quite a few that I kept kind of putting on and taking off and I've settled on Bone Shaker by Sherry Priest. Gorgeous cover. This is a steampunk zombie airship adventure of rollicking pace and sweeping proportions, apparently. I have tried to read this before. In my teenage years, I'm pretty sure I owned this and I didn't finish it even though it sounds like something I would absolutely love and I'm thinking that my taste might have changed and now it will be something I really enjoy. Couldn't find my copy for Love No Money. Have no idea what I did with my copy. I don't think I unhauled it because I didn't kind of DNF it with the idea of never going back to it. I think I just put it down, but I don't know what I did with it. Maybe I physically put it down somewhere. I don't know. I'll never know. But I did manage to get this second hand. So this was basically, let me think, it was during the Civil War, they heard rumours that there was gold under the ice in Alaska, so this doctor, professor, scientist person developed a massive drill that could drill through Alaskan ice and it unleashed this gas which turned people into zombies and they kind of had to wall them in and now his widow and their son are kind of ostracised because this guy basically made Seattle a no-go zone and, you know, killed however many people, I guess. I don't, I don't know. And, uh, yeah... I think it's about their son trying to rewrite history, maybe like go back and fix it. I don't know. I, I honestly don't remember, but it actually sounds really, really cool. So I'm gonna give it another go, we'll see. So that's it for TB Ratsy. Now it's time for Bacopoli. Before we get into the roles, obviously the idea is to double up as much as possible with TB Ratsy reads. We already have like 11 books so <laughs> we don't want to add too many so hopefully I won't have many new ones to tell you about that's the plan I'm nervous let's get into roll one I can't tell you how nervous I am about this my plan was to do five rolls so five rolls is what we shall do but having just seen how TV Ratsy went I am afraid for the chance card I will be picking from my little cauldron cup. For Community Shelf, I've decided to cut myself a little bit of slack and I will pick one of the prompts from my TV Ratsy that I've already picked because I'm feeling like I need to cut myself a break. Okay, roll number one. No doubles. Five. One, two, three, four, five. This is the one that's like girl, boy, people, son, daughter, it has to have one of these words in the title. So roll number one gave us people, and according to Becca's breakdown, read a book with a word in the title that refers to a person. A lot of options are listed on the board, but other options include emperor and empress or someone's name. So I'm doubling up and I'm using Satan Loves You by Grady Hendrix. His name is Satan. So. Roll number two. Are you for real? Um, it's a double. <laughs> no! Okay. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's community shelf. So, I mean, that's not too bad then. Because I'm just going to pick a prompt that I'm already filling for TV Ratsy and it's graphic novel. So, roll number two has given us a double. Because, of course. I probably shouldn't have doubled up in the way that I have but I've I thought about getting a prompt that I haven't used already for TV Ratsy and I was like no do you know what this is already going badly you use a prompt that you've already picked so obviously I'm just going to use through the woods again <laughs> through the woods this is fine round number three <laughs> 
Brill. So two <laughs> current events and uh, another double. Wow. Roll number three. Another double. Another double. It's fine. It's fine. At least it's current events, so we can double up again. So I shall be using David Attenborough's A Life on Our Planet because it's about climate change, which is a very current issue. Roll number four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Spooky. Thank you. Roll number four gave us spooky, which is perfect because at least the the prompts are matching up because we have ghosties, we have spooky, I can double up. I'm using the Caro Horn by Darcy Coates for this one. Roll number five, which should have been our last roll, but here we are, is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Feed scroll, interesting. Roll number five has given us feed scroll, so I don't have anything for that yet. We're gonna scroll through Instagram together. I am looking for a book that I own and that I want to read because some things I'm just not in the mood for and I'm trying to be kinder to myself. So let's just see the first thing that pops up. I'll just do start a screen recording so that you can see what I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. What have we got here? No, there's a couple that I own, but I'm just not in the mood for them. Okay. Okay, do Avengers. Hi. None of me. No, I don't think that counts. Oh, okay, a bookshelf. Nope. Hey. Hey. Did you see Kaizan number 10 is in that picture? And I just read number nine. Yes. Be kind to yourself. Yes. That's what we're picking. That's what we're picking. Let me get them. JJK, volume 10. I'm very happy to be able to continue this and get a bit more manga on my TBR. So this is about sorcerers who fight curses and it's just so good. One of my absolute faves. The anime is my favorite anime and I'm just excited to be able to continue this. Roll number six. Five. One, two, three, four. Five, the of a and again another one of these ones with the word in the title. Roll number six gave us the of a and an and. Read a book that has the of a and an and in the title. So I'm just gonna double up again and unpick the diviners. And what is hopefully our final roll? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Small book. Thank you. Roll number seven has given us a small book and I've had to add a book for this, but I'm not mad about it because it is tiny. I've gone for The Blood Beast Mutations by Cole John Lee. This is set where there's like a global pandemic and it's mutating and there's riots in the streets and I think it's like a physical mutation. I'm not sure. And this guy is trying to get to his wife. It's so tiny. So I can't really say too much about it. I don't even really want to read the back and remind myself too much because it's such a short book. There could be spoilery things, but I absolutely love this cover. There's another one with a very similar cover that I also got from a vulnerable club, which was called Dear Laura by Gemma and Moore, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping this is gonna be the same. And the last thing we need to sort out is my TBR for The Novice Path, which is this beautiful thing here that G has created. It's almost like D&D. &D. So it's it, very exciting for me. So you have to like create your own character. And we've got a list of prompts to take us on the novice path. Let me show you this beautiful map. We have to follow the novice path to get to the entrance to the Iridium Academy, which we will be going to next time round. So we've got a list of prompts to do and then a couple of prompts to kind of create your character, which don't have to be done this month. They can be done anytime until the next readathon. But I'm going to pick a book for everything anyway just in case but you don't have to do all of the prompts you only have to complete two of the prompts I have decided to do everything bar two because there were two that just didn't really I didn't feel like reading anything for them so the first prompt we have is the novice path entrance which is to read a book with a map I really struggle with this one I could not find any book that I picked with a map 
until I looked in one that I didn't think it would be in. Bone Shaker has a map, has a random map of Seattle. So thank you Bone Shaker for coming through because I really could not believe. I was checking all the fancy ones, nothing. And then I thought I'll just have a quick flick through the others and Bone Shaker was like the last one I checked and there it was. The second prompt is Ash Torn Tree, a book that keeps tempting you or top of your TBR. Top of my TBR is anyway the wind blows because it should have been last month so obviously it's top priority for this month. The Mist of Solitude read a standalone. I have gone for The Resident by David Jackson. Ruin of the Sky. Read a book featuring ghosts, haunted houses or other supernatural elements. This is fitting in very well with my other TBRs. So we've got The Diviners by Libba Bray. Obsidian Falls was to read a thriller or mystery book, which I am not picking anything for. I'm not, am I? Hmm, maybe I am. At the very last second, I have decided to add in What Lies Between Us by John Mars. Oh, this is so, why am I doing this to myself? I have been wanting to read this for quite a while. Um, it is quite long. Uh, but this is about, well, Nina can never forgive Maggie for what she did and she can never let her leave. I don't want to remind myself too much, but I think this woman is keeping another woman hidden, imprisoned in her house. I'm not sure. Oh, this is a bad move. There's enough books on the TBR. I'm adding it anyway. Insert that Louis Spence thing. You know. I'm not allowed. It's too late now, I've done it. Oh, what am I doing? Tower of Rumination, read a five star prediction. Satan loves you, thanks. Aurelium Academy Arc, book with a school setting. I'm not reading anything for this. Am I? Wait, scratch that, I am. Blue Exorcist, a chunk of it takes place at True Cross Academy, so why not? I'm already reading it. Okay, so apparently I am doing them. So the next three prompts are not things that I have to read this month. I can read them anytime between now and the next round of the readathon. But I'm going to tell you about them as if I will read them because if I manage to read everything, then I've already ticked them off and I'm good to go. And if I don't, I'll reassess. I haven't actually filled in the scholars key yet but it will also give me a chance to tell you a bit about the character that I'm kind of creating in my head they don't exist yet I haven't picked like a name or anything but I know roughly a bit about them so the first thing we have to pick is a background whether they are from a wild background or an urban background I want my character to be from a city so I'm going to use the blood beast mutation for this one because it's set in New York City then for a province for them to be from, I've gone for Dark Meadow, which I'll just show you in here. So I want them to be from this uh, continent, this continent. And to be from this continent, you need to read A Dark Academia. And for that, I don't know whether this is, I, I think this is Dark Academia, I think it counts. It was on a list. So I've gone for As I Descended by Robin Talley. I wasn't in the mood for Secret History and I'm hoping that I'll have read Bunny. But this is like a, I think this is like a Suffolk Macbeth type retelling. I don't know. I bought it a long time ago. It's been sat on my shelf for a while and I've kind of forgotten everything about it. So apart from the fact that it's set in a school and I think that this couple, Maria and Lily, are like, think that this other girl, Delilah, is standing in their way of greatness. I don't know. I think that's like the premise of Macbeth, but I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna go with it. We'll see. But this is bottom of the list for September. You know, if I don't get to it, it's absolutely fine because I might just read it in a dark academia another time, but I'll add it and we'll see. We'll see what happens. And for heritage, I wanted to be an ill, ill Tyrion? Elterian, I'll show you. So these are Elterians, I think that's how you say it, and G described them as kind of like the rogue race um, and being like quite sarky and quite dark and yeah, that's my jam. So I've gone for these guys and for that, you need to read a book with a crow on the cover or a red cover. 
so I'm going to use Remina by Genji Ito. That is everything, I think. Sorry if there is an angle change trying to pick all these books up, I moved the tripod. So this is my September TBR plus the Caro Horn and A Life on a Planet. This is heavy, I'm going to put it down. I am wildly concerned but this is fine I have to just remind myself that they're not all compulsory reads I need to focus on the TB Ratsy which is only 11 books it's only 11 books this is fine <laughs> I tell you what though if it's as bad a reading month as it was this month where I'm trying to cram everything into the end I will not be doing a roll per unread book because you know <laughs> Let's not add five rolls on top. <laughs> this was chaotic. I think I've split it into like six different videos. I don't know why I thought that was going to be a good idea, but hopefully I'll be able to edit it together and it's not absolute carnage. But if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know in the comments if there's any in my list that you have really enjoyed or you think I'm going to really enjoy. Let me know something you're planning on reading in September. If you don't have anything to say, but you just want me to know you're here, you know that Purple Heart is always appreciated. All my socials are linked in the description box below. I'm trying to remember everything that I should tell you because my brain is fried. A TB Ratsy, Bookopoly, A Novice Path. I made it. I made it. It's a good stack. It's a hefty stack, but it's a good stack. So let's stay positive. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.